So it's time to settle this. Can you actually raise a Doberman successfully in an apartment? Well, we do know for sure that Dobermans love being just way too close to their owners. And they certainly hate giving you any alone time, even when you're going to the bathroom. But they are fairly large dogs and they need a lot of exercise. So how in the world are you supposed to ever raise one of these dogs while living in an apartment? Well, today we're gonna meet an apartment dwelling Doberman named Romeo and his two owners to find out exactly how this is done. So let's get going. Well, I know it's possible to raise a Doberman in a small space like an apartment and be successful at it because I've met many Doberman owners who have done just that. But today, I think it's important, instead of me talking about it, we actually talked to some owners who are in the process of doing that right now with their Doberman. So you're gonna meet a Doberman named Romeo and his owners, Chris and Jessica. So let's jump over to the computer and see what they got to say about how this is done. Come on. Chris, Jessica, thank you guys so much for uh, meeting up and talking with me today. No problem, John. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. So uh, tell me a little bit about you guys. Um, you and your, your dog, Romeo, tell me about him also. Sure. So he actually just uh, turned one year. He's about a year and two months because he turned uh, in just the end of April. So he's just over a year now. We've had him in this apartment since he was, uh, what's it, he was eight weeks. So we got him really early, got the ears cropped, tail docked, everything. Um, and we He's a great little dog. I mean, he's actually a big dog now. He's on he's on the big side for the Doberman. He's about 95 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, staying super healthy, get a lot of exercise. As you know, we're in an apartment, so that's a huge yeah. part of being in the apartment or anywhere with this breed. They're a working dog, and they need that extra stimulus. Otherwise, you can have bad behaviors. Yeah, yeah. How, um, how big is your apartment? How d Describe it for me. Sure. So it's uh, one bedroom, one bath. Um, it's got a little kitchen in it as well, which we're in actually right now. Yeah. Okay. We're just sitting at a table right behind it. So, uh, I'd say it's about 400 square feet. Oh, okay. Um, or maybe, maybe even 500. My own, but that's it. Okay. Five, five, 600. I don't, I don't want to be too stingy, <laughs> but it's about five, 600 square feet. So we have all, you know, a bunch of smaller rooms. He has his quarters, a couch in here that he loves to stay on, a bed in the bedroom that he loves to stay on. And then a bunch of toys spread out throughout the way. And 95 pounds of Doberman in that small area. It's, yeah. <laughs> how, 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 how is that? Is that a, so obviously my main reason for talking with you is because so many people want a Doberman and they're scared to get them in like a small confined area like an apartment. You know, they're worried about all types of things, exercise and other things. How has that been for you? Has it been as bad as you thought it would be? Worse? Better? Um, it's exactly as I expected. Uh, and therefore, we knew what was coming so we can put things in place. As you know, we watched your videos for a long time up until the time we bought Romeo. So before even we got him, we already knew that they were going to need stimuli. They were going to need exercise at least the two hours a day. And so, I mean, people came in with crazy ideas saying that this is the dog's going to run the apartment. It's way too small. Um, but really, once you can solve its energy, you know, needs, then it's yeah. not as wild of a dog. You know how to control it a lot better. And, and the animal is a lot more calm in its space. So, yeah, learning yeah. to kind of uh, solve that energy problem for the dog, which is not yeah. a problem, it's just the way they are, but this way they can stay calm. That, that's awesome. So you've gone through, okay, one year, you said a year and two months roughly. So you've gone through most of the puppy stage, or all the puppy stages pretty much. Um, how are those? <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Uh, I mean, that's like, the, probably one word would be interesting. Because we went through the, the teething stage, and that went from anything, you know, from your skin to the wall, the couch, tables. Uh, he ate a couple of my scrunchies. <laughs> scrunchies, anything that he could get in if we weren't looking. But a lot. thankfully, we were off with the COVID restrictions. We were stuck at home for a long time, so we had a lot of time to actually watch over him and nip those bad behaviors in the butt. A lot of real significant damage done, or just little things? I could show you things that he's destroyed. <laughs> During the beginning stages from moldings on the wall, we went through three carpets now because he'd get the edges and that once he gets it started, he would just keep going with it. Comforters. Uh, just one comforter, but I don't think he's made like a terrible mess. Just, 
you know, like the molding. Okay, the molding is still there. You could just paint over right. it. You know, and the carpet. Once you chew the corners, then the threads become loose. So you yeah. just need to get a new carpet because it gets messy. But he hasn't yeah. been like a total terror. Have you found ways to kind of like minimize that though? Uh, yeah, it's the energy. It's it's them getting into a routine, knowing that they're going to be able to have an outlet. I've found yeah. because they have like. I mean, you could think of it as a powder keg that if it doesn't get released outside, it's going to come inside the house. <laughs> yeah. So once they know that this is their time to exercise and our schedules worked out perfectly, even when we went back to work, uh, she's a nurse, I'm a personal trainer, real estate agent, but we did have this gap in the middle of the day that worked out perfectly and that's his time. And okay. I mean, we do it in the morning, midday and at night as well. Um, but he knows that that's coming for him. So even when I walk in the door right midday, he knows it's time to get out there, play. We have a sporting field across the street from us, so we're able to just run. I mean, he can go for 100 yards off leash, very secure area, and he has that outlet to get it all out. So being when that happens, everything's a lot calmer. He's not as antsy or anxious to bite things or to, to explore too much with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> there he is there he already wants attention now hey. yeah they're talking about you <laughs> well that that's awesome so you're kind of falling into a little bit of a routine and figuring out how to manage that it, i think even the most prepared owners no matter how big your place is you can live in a mansion they'll still on occasion things will happen they'll lose something they'll, they'll they might lose a corner of a rug or something um but that's great that you're figuring it out and I, I don't think that's necessarily um just a factor of you being in a small area um I don't know, unless you think differently. No, I mean, maybe someone could say, well, the dog could run around a house all day, but they do get curious, and I think they do get more anxious if you're not around and there's no way that they can really just run, play, yeah. let it all loose, you know? So I think right. that's important to the dog in general, this breed, is, is having right. that outlet. And if you have an apartment, but you, or if you have a house, or in general, if you can't get this dog outside one to two hours a day, it may not be the best move for you or the dog. Yeah. And how have you handled like going to the bathroom? I know that can be tough in your if you're in an apartment type situation. He's very good. We let him out on walks, so we take him out on the leash. Um, he holds bathroom. I mean, number two, it's like every six hours, six to eight hours. He's very flexible. That extra two hours is fine for him. Um, and then peeing. Sometimes he just doesn't even want to go outside and, and pee. he can just hold that for what I've had, 12 hours. And I'm like, wow, yeah. credit to you. <laughs> when he does have to go, he whines and cries or what? He rings some bells by the door here. So he'll go up, okay. ring him with his snout. And then, uh, or if it's an emergency, he'll hit it with his hand or his paw. <laughs> and then we'll go out. You know, we, that's like the sense of urgency is how hard he hits those bells. I know you have that too with yeah. uh, Arlo over there. And that's where we learned it. And it works like a charm. That's awesome. And Jessica, you, you're a nurse, right? So do you work uh, weird hours sometimes? or? I do. I work nighttime, so overnight. So I'm home during the day. So I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So, you know, daytime I'm home. So if Chris is at work, I'm here. And I could take him out in the morning, um, afternoon. And depending on his schedule, maybe I'll take him out before I leave to go to work at night. Or if he's coming home, you know, kind of differs based on our, our schedule when he's coming home. But, yeah. I mean, sometimes he'll even go out twice a day. You know, like, sometimes he'll just go twice and he's fine. What about if you have, like, a super busy day one day and, and you don't, he doesn't get his normal stuff? Do you, I mean, do you notice anything about him? or? Well, Fridays. So, <laughs> Fridays, um, if, you know, during the daytime. So, I, I usually just take him for walks and stuff like that. But I won't take him... <laughs> to go run for 45 minutes. Like the off-leash stuff. She doesn't like, feel comfortable with I don't him want, with Yeah, I don't want to be with him off-leash. You know, God forbid something happens. I feel like his recall is a little better with Chris. So on Fridays, Chris works like all day. So he doesn't get a chance to come home in the middle of the day. So I'll notice like in the middle of the afternoon, 12, 1, 2, like he starts getting antsy. You know, like he wants to go out and play. And I'll just take him for a walk, but sometimes it's not enough for him. And I could tell, like, when we come back inside. Um, so usually when Chris comes back at, like, 7 o'clock at night, you know, he'll try to take him out to get some sort of energy out. It's party Cause time. Because if, if we go out to dinner, then he's going to go crazy in here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right, yeah, absolutely. Friday is the hard day, I would when say. When the routine gets cut, so. Yeah, yep, they love that routine, right? And if you mess with that... 
<laughs> you got to pay the price. I had a small dog. It was nothing like this. If <laughs> they could go out whenever, eat whenever, these guys like a schedule, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But speaking of which, you have a Maltese there too, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. She's hiding somewhere. She's so, she's like this. <laughs> how do they get along? And, and I mean, they're they're in close quarters all the time, right? They are. Yeah, so, so he's 95 pounds and she's five pounds. Um, but, <laughs> you know, we taught him from the beginning that she will run the show. We don't want any chances of, of anything. If he wants to get territorial near the food dish, we made sure that they, we were, they were both trained when that was yeah. t- happening. Um, so, if anything, she takes his food. Yeah. She'll come right up and they'll play, too. They'll jump on each other, which is very cute. They don't lie together a lot, but they'll uh, they'll play. Oh, you're hitting the They'll... Uh, <laughs> They'll, they'll run around together a little bit. That's but we did, cool. um, in one of your videos, you said to always have, like, an escape route for the small dog. Yes, So yes, we have important. a gate that divides this this room that we're in from the bedroom. And we always have the gate closed when we're not home. So Romeo will stay in this big room. And Lola can actually fit in between, like, the bars of the gate. So... She'll come hang out with Romeo, and if she wants a break, she just sneaks through the gate, and then she's all by herself on the other side, and he can't get to her. That's perfect. So she can have a good time out, a little rest, rest if it's getting to be too much and too intense for her. That's perfect. Yeah. perfect. So she just goes in and out between the two rooms. That's awesome. Do they ever get loud? Like, well, either playing together or how about barking issues? And I know a small area sometimes, that can, that's a concern of people in apartments, right? Because they usually have close neighbors. How, how noisy is it, or how vocal is he? Um, they're really not terrible. I have a camera installed. It's, mm, Behind it's us. that black dot right here, if you can see it. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I can speak on that to them, and I taught them through that camera that, you know, if I speak on this, it means I'm coming through the door. Let's be civil. So a lot of times, if they are barking, you know, if I'm out, I'll check the phone. I check on them a lot, actually, because uh, yeah. I like to see what he they're doing. He checks too much but, sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if they're going off, I can just tell them enough lay down and they'll both go and lay down on the couch um they're very good both both are very good on that front but the barking pretty minimal they don't really go off too much is is he is he pretty clean i mean yeah he's clean i mean we bathe him it's like once every three to four months so he's had a couple baths with us so far and uh like the oatmeal the, the regular scrub put him in the actual bathtub and we take him over to my parents' house and we put him in the bathtub there and it's, oh, what are you doing? And then, um... All right, get out. From there, <laughs> Come. I mean, the, he's very clean. We get the nails done, I'd say, almost twice a month because yeah, you really have to, stay on, you have to stay on top of that, I right. found. But um, other than that, yeah, very clean dog. Doesn't drool at all if that's in none of that. As long as he brushes him, I think you brush him, what, twice a week? Yeah, about Three twice. Three times, twice a week. Not three, not three. Not three. <laughs> Twice a week. Then it, he's no mess. I I like clean floors, and yeah. sometimes after I'm done cleaning the floors, then he goes and drinks a ton of water, and then he leaves this huge water trail. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that drives me crazy. You get the water trail, the wet, <laughs> wet sock zone. Yeah, yeah. Right, and he always comes over and puts his head right on your lap right after that usually, right? Yeah, and then your leg gets wet. (laughs) But did you have your place first and then get the doorman, your Romeo? Yeah, and you do have to check with your homeowner's insurance because you can avoid that by a vicious breed. You know, some, they call it that. I, mean, I can tell how vicious he is just from this from this interview with his, with <laughs> yeah, his head. Yeah, no, all the licking to death. Yeah. But, yeah, so you just always want to check with your insurance. We have State Farm. They accept all breeds. So if that's someone's looking for a recommendation, that's what I was told. They have yeah. to do check and do their own research. But So that's why we But we did. Okay. We were looking, like, a couple of months ago just to see, like, other apartments that are a little bigger. But they were, like, apartments in a complex. And... Most of them had Dobermans on their restricted dog breed. But really? if he's considered a service pet, then he's allowed. Does he have any, like, favorite activities to do, like, inside the apartment? Like, do you guys have game, a certain game or something you do? He loves the Kong when you fill the Kong with, like, treats and stuff. Yeah, no, he loves the Kong. We'll do a little tug-of-war in here sometimes. Yeah. Uh, most times, you know, we just win, but or we'll have him let go and... Um, other, sometimes we'll let him win too, but not very often. Um, but that's really the most we do indoors as far as activities, or we'll do just regular training where we'll have him do all the commands, run through that. And we do that before every meal anyway. 
but most of the the training and the real activities take place outside. Okay. So there are a lot of people who are first time dog owners. They've never owned a dog before and they, they live in an apartment and they want to get a Doberman. Do you have, what's your advice? Now you've done it. You've been on the other side of it. Some people are just dying. They wish they had a crystal ball to know exactly what it was like and how doable it is or isn't. What, what can you tell them? Uh, I would just say the one dog I had before this was raised with me and my parents' house. They raised it. So it was really my first time raising a dog. You know, the little one was hers, was given to her by a friend. Um, so with this one, I kind of just went in as, you know, got to really set the tone early with them. Uh, really show that you're the alpha, make them do all of their commands before they eat. Be the first one to walk through the door, make them wait. Um, teaching them patience and leave it was very important because, you know, if, if you can make them leave things, that you are perceived as the alpha. And... Uh, uh, that was really, you know, that's really the main thing is they will try to override you and test you a little bit once they get to that like 10 month, year, year mm -hmm. old phase. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, that one phase. But, you know, you get through that and it's, I'm, you know, we just kept the momentum. It's been fine since. So as far as the concerns and hesitations being in a small place, it's doable. I'm here. I'm guessing it's sounding like it's doable as long as you get in a good routine to address the exercise and go into the bathroom issues. Is that about it? If yeah. you can get them to the bathroom, if you can get their exercise, and of course, you know, as in any situation, remain the alpha, you're fine. And maybe it doesn't hurt to get to know your neighbors too and, and be friends be <laughs> yeah, friends. Yeah, check them. your homeowners, all of it. Chris, Jessica, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking time to talk with me. Oh, thank Not you. Not a problem, John. Thanks for having us. Wow, it was really cool seeing how Chris and Jessica are coping with their Doberman Romeo in that small apartment. Seems like they're doing a great job raising him. And I really commend all you guys out there who are living in apartments and raising Dobermans for just having that love and passion for this breed that you're willing to put in that extra work and that extra attention that it takes to raise a dog like this in a small space. Please guys, before you go anywhere, hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell icon next to it. That way you get notified on my next video when I release it. If you don't do that, you might just miss that next one. And who knows, that next video might be that one that you've been waiting for me to do for months now. And yep, yep I actually think uh, that video is due to be released any day now. So make sure notifications are hit. Thank you guys so much. Keep being great Doberman breed ambassadors. And of course, see you next time.